Hello, welcome. Um, I'd like to show you some curious things about Excel that maybe you weren't aware of, but um, you probably ought to be. Uh, I've entered some formulas and numbers in some cells here. I'll expose them as, as we go along. First of all, I've entered three numbers in the top three uh, cells here, so I'll, I'll expose those now. Uh, they're uh, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, and 0.1, so we'll just make those visible here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 0.4 and the 0.1 from 0.5 uh, and put the results in uh, cell D1. Uh, and as you might expect, I think uh, the answer to that should be 0. Uh, and in fact, um, it is. Uh, and so nothing unusual there. Uh, we'll, we'll play around this a couple of different ways. I've um, uh, entered that as a single calculation in a cell. Um, cell A2 equals 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4 minus 0 0.1. Uh, we might expect that that also uh, will be 0. Uh, we'll play around with this a different way. I'm going to multiply 1 times uh, the value in D1, which is 0. Uh, we might expect that 1 times 0 uh, equals 0. Uh, there's the formula that you can see 1 times um, D1. Uh, we should expect that that also would be 0. Uh, now, we've uh, said that um, uh, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4 minus 0 0.1 is 0. Uh, we've shown that uh, 1 times 0 is 0. Uh, we would think that um, uh, 1 times the quantity, uh, 5 minus, uh, 0.5 minus 0.4 minus 0.1 equals 0. I've entered that in the formula here. 1 times uh, the quantity, 0.5 minus 0.4 minus 0.1 uh, should be equal to 0. Let's see what happens when we um, uh, expose the answer to that. Uh, and surprisingly enough, uh, we, we don't exactly get... Um, zero. We get almost zero, uh, but there's this kind of litter here at the end here. Uh, this is what I used to call binary fuzz uh, back in the day. Uh, and uh, you might wonder what that's all about. Let me show you one other example that I think you'll find um, a little bit curious. Um, I've entered um, 1000.8 minus 1000. The answer we get should be uh, 0.8, of course. It looks pretty straightforward uh, when we actually do this calculation. Um, in fact, we get a number that's very close to 8. Uh, if, you, if you don't apply this mask, um, and let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to um, uh, format cells here. This has got a mask. If I just apply the general format uh, to this, um, and click OK. Um, Excel will happily display 0.8, but in fact, um, uh, if we um, uh, go back and apply our uh, uh, custom mask uh, to this to explain what, what's really going on behind the scenes here, uh, we can see that this is, is very nearly 8, um, but if we look at all of the uh, figures that it's willing to display here, uh, again, we've got this letter. So uh, what's going on here? Um, this actually is not a bug. Uh, this is working as it's supposed to, uh, but, but this is kind of serious if you don't understand. Th this issue has, has actually killed people. Um, and it's not just an issue in Excel. Um, I can show you the same thing in Microsoft Access. Um, here I've put the numbers that I uh, showed you in Excel um, uh, in a table. So I've got 1.5.4.1. 1. I've created um, a query that's um, uh, going to um, subtract um, the point five the point, point 0.4 and, and point 0.1 from um, uh, point 0.5, multiply them by point 0.1, and, and if we go and see that calculation, we can see we've got a similar thing here. So um, it, it's, it's not just in Excel, it's in um, Access as well, and it's not just Microsoft products, it's in um, pretty much anything that you're going to get. So 
Uh, let's talk about what, what's going on here. This is a basic artifact um, of the way we handle numbers uh, on computers. Um, so uh, we, have, we have 10 fingers, and so uh, including thumbs, uh, and so we compute numbers using base 10. Uh, I'm sure you all know that, and I'm sure you also know that um, computers speak binary or base 2. Uh, and so we've come up with systems that take our base 10 numbers and, and convert them to base 2 numbers so that computers can uh, manipulate them. Uh, but it turns out in order to do that um, in, in a way that allows us to work with really big and really small numbers um, at the same time uh, with a reasonable amount of memory, um, the conversion of non-integer uh, rational numbers expressed in base 10 to binary um, uh, isn't always exact, at least if we need to constrain computer memory and processing time, uh, and, um, and if we're willing to compromise on a certain amount of precision. So uh, converting the, the fraction um, 0.1 decimal to binary, for example, produces um, a repeating number that we have to arbitrarily truncate um, depending on how many bits of precision we want. Um, and that produces a very tiny amount of round-off error. Um, so just like dividing 1 by 3 in, in decimal um, produces 3.333, three, 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 uh, three, 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 and it, it goes on and on, um, uh, that we have to round off somewhere. Um, so are some decimal numbers converted to binary also inexact uh, when truncated. Um, why that's so is because of the way engineers have devised to store so-called floating point numbers. Um, and those are numbers that can be uh, very big or very small uh, with a fixed number of bits of storage. And, and usually that's um, either 32 bits or 64 bits of computer uh, memory. So any number, uh, whether it's a big number or a small number, you know, 0 0.007 or 364 quadrillion um, is, is stored in either a 32-bit slot or a 64-bit slot of computer memory. Um, so here's a page that um, you can look at um, that, 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 that shows you how a computer stores a number um, uh, and, and is broken up. Um, and you can see that a 32-bit number, that's usually referred to as a single precision number, uh, it has one, one bit reserved for the sign. Uh, whether it's a positive or neg negative number, um, eight bits reserved for an exponent. So it's written and stored internally in as a kind of a binary scientific um, uh, number, uh, and um, 23 bits for the mantissa, um, and and that whole thing takes up um, uh, 32 bits of storage. So uh, a computer that works this way can store a value um, that holds. Let me let me check my notes here. Um, a single precision floating point number ranging in value from uh, on the negative side um, minus 3.4 times 10 to the 38 through minus 1.4 times 10 to the minus 45th uh, and on the positive side from 1.4 times 10 to the minus 45th uh, through 3.4 times 10 to the 38th now um, that, that's a that's from a really small number you know from like a point and then a whole bunch of zeros after the decimal point to some numbers to like really big numbers you know times 10 to the you know 38 zeros and and so on so uh, that's an enormous range um, and and then you, you you're kind of limited in the in the mantissa over there with with how many digits you can have so if you remember your number line from, I don't know, fourth grade or whenever, um, you know there are an infinite number of points on that number line, and we've, we've only got just a few spaces here to reserve. So there's a lot of approximation going on. Um, and um, we really only end up with about seven figures sometimes less of precision. Um, and so, you know, there's going to be a lot of round off in here. So that's why you see those extra numbers floating around. So um, 
Um, what the spec does is allow you to work with really big and really small numbers um, as, as long as you understand what you're doing and what, what the potential limits are. So let's take, let's take a look at the numbers that I entered. If you, if you enter 0.5 here, uh, so let me put that down. We're going to enter 0.5 um, and um, get that entered here. Um, so 0.5 um, turns out to enter. There's a, there's a perfect conversion for 0.5. Uh, and so we start out here with a few ones, and then uh, we get a bunch of zeros at the end. And so there's no problem converting 0.5. But on the other hand, if we put in 0.1, and let that go through. Um, we can see that um, we have a binary rep representation that ends in this uh, repeating decimal. Uh, we can see that there's an error um, due to the conversion. Uh, that's pretty small, but it is an error. Uh, and so that's why when we do that um, you know, combined um, operation uh, in, the, in the Excel spreadsheet and the access version I show you, there is that um, truncation. So uh, this is the issue, uh, and and um, so there are a couple workarounds. Uh, you can get arbitrarily close. There's a double precision number type, same idea. It gets um, 64 bits or eight bytes of storage, um, bigger range of numbers that you can deal with, about 15 digits of precision. Um, the, the error is smaller, but but you still get um, you still get some error. Um, there are a few options. Um, there are math packages if you need more precision, um, computer libraries. Um, the expense is, is more and more memory and computing power. Uh, so in part, uh, really complex um, problems like, like weather modeling and particle physics, they need supercomputers with, with a lot of more sophisticated um, um, uh, processing to deal with really, really big, really, really small numbers um, to get more and more exact uh, and refined um, answers to their problems. There, there are also some other data types you can use. For example, um, uh, you can't run budgets with single precision um, floating point numbers because it, it, it doesn't take a very big budget before you start having round off errors in the penny. So uh, there are uh, currency data types uh, in um, uh, things like the spreadsheet and, and database packages you can use that will um, have special routines for uh, making sure that you can deal with large budgets without having round off errors. So uh, those are some things that you can do, but this is a problem that um, you need to be aware of. And so when you're when you're working with spreadsheets and with databases, you need to be very careful about um, picking your data types, understanding what data types should be used for what kind of numbers what you can do with the data types that you're picking. But that's the subject for another lecture. So thank you for watching.